Hello, I'm Dr. Tong, and today I'm going to share an awesome prize with you. Ta da da Tong! The Tong Prize. The prize takes its name from the Tang Dynasty. Many consider this period as China's very own golden era, a religious and cultural melting pot, if you will. As its name implies, the Tang Prize hopes to inspire and better the world. The prize also brings together people from far and wide to solve common challenges facing humanity in the 21st century. Let's take a closer look at the logo. The character Tang was handpicked from the calligraphy of Mi Fu, a Song Dynasty artist. With their bold black strokes, don't the characters look like two confident figures striding down the street? Then we add in the award's name in English, and there you have it, an award that strives to bridge the East and the West. But that's not all. The prize was established here in Taiwan. Inaugurated in 2014, the Tom Prize is awarded biannually. So, how are the winners selected, you ask? Well, the selection committee consists of respected scholars from across the globe. Laureates are chosen regardless of nationality, gender, race, creed, condition, or color. Now, are you excited to learn about the four categories? Sustainable development recognizes groundbreaking innovations in science and technology that further the sustainability of human societies. Biopharmaceutical science awards original research that improves human health. Sinology showcases Chinese culture and its contributions to the development of human civilization. The rule of law celebrates contributions to legal studies and the realization of the rule of law in contemporary societies. Winners take home a cash prize of up to 40 million NT and a research grant of up to 10 million NT. So now, do you know a little more about the Tong Prize? I sure hope so. Come join me in anticipating the newest Tong laureates. Ta da da Tong! Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, online viewers worldwide, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the first ever virtual Tang Prize Award Ceremony. My name is Grace Huang, the Master of Ceremony for the presentation of this distinguished international award. We'd like to extend our appreciation to you all for attending this ceremony to witness the outstanding achievements of the 2020 Tang Prize laureates and to share the joy in honoring laureates' contributions. The Tang Prize was established in 2012 to encourage individuals across the globe to chart the middle path to sustainable development. By recognizing extraordinary achievements in the four major fields of sustainable development, biopharmaceutical science, synology, and rule of law, the prize is intended to gather the wisdom mankind needs to tackle the crisis unique to the 21st century. Its laureates are selected on the basis of the originality of their work and its impact on society, irrespective of their nationality, ethnicity, gender, or faith. Although the 2020 Tang Prize laureates were officially named last year, today's virtual ceremony still carries weight to all the laureates. This marks the moment that we're able to extend wholehearted recognition to their success and achievements, which have resulted in positive and profound impact on mankind. To begin with, I'm pleased 
to invite Dr. Chen Zhenquan, CEO of the Tongue Prize Foundation, to give us the welcoming remarks. Let's welcome Dr. Chen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tongue Prize Award Ceremony. In 2020, the COVID pandemic swept the world and affected many plans the Tongue Prize Foundation had prepared. At first, we had hoped the 2020 winners can come to Taiwan to receive the awards and take part in the Ten Prize Week. But the pandemic showed no signs of slowing down. So the foundation eventually decided that the awarding ceremony would not be on site in Taipei. This pandemic is closely related to many factors that shape our life, such as the environment, ecosystems, climate change, culture, and the development of biotechnology in different parts of the world. And to resolve this issue and build a sustainable planet, all of us, regardless of race, nationality, gender, or where we live, we have to unite and work together. During this period, natural disaster, they were mostly caused by extreme weather events, including typhoons, floods, earthquakes, and wildfires, and man-made disasters like wars and the refugee issues continued to happen. Challenge posed by the combination of a global pandemic and the issues of disaster have created enormous strains on many governments and their people, especially for developing countries. However, these challenges remind us that the Ten Prize was set up with the goal of making the world a better place. They ex also explain why we chose these four award categories, sustainable development, biopharmaceutical science, sinology, and rule of law, to highlight the important roles both science and the humanity can play in tackling the problems we face today. On behalf of Dr. Samuel Yin, founder of the Ten Prize, I would like to thank President of Selection Committee, Dr. Xu Chen, members of Selection Committee, and everyone who participated in the nomination process. Because of your efforts, we were able to select people who have made great contributions in the field mentioned earlier as our 2020 laureates. Congratulations to all the laureates. Let's hope the virus will be contained soon and a valuable lesson will be learned so we can all live our lives in a more sustainable way in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chen, for your remarks. Each year, the Tang Prize receives numerous nominations from all around the globe. Nominees for each category are selected by the selection committees who ensure the highest standards of the selection process laid down by the Tang Prize are kept. It's now my pleasure to invite the president of the Tang Prize Selection Committee, Dr. Qian Xu, to give the opening remarks. Now, please join me to welcome Dr. Qian. Thank you, Dr. Chen. Tang Prize founder, Dr. Yin, the honored laureates, ladies and gentlemen. The Tang Prize was established by Dr. Samuel Yin in 2012 as a biannual international award to recognize and encourage innovative research in selected fields with the aim of creating another golden era for humankind, similar to that of the Tang Dynasty more than a millennium ago. I would like to express my sincere appreciation to the review committees for selecting the superb laureates and to the foundation staff led by Dr. Jesse Chen for their excellent work in face of the pandemic challenges. The 2020 town prizes are presented to eight laureates in four fields. The laureate for sustainable development is Dan Jen Goodall for her groundbreaking discoveries in primatology and lifelong dedication to the conservation of earth environment. The biopharmaceutical science laureates 
uh, Dr. Charles Dinarello of the University of Colorado, Dr. Mark Feldman of Oxford University, and Dr. Tatamitsu Kishimoto of Osaka University for their pioneering development of cytokine targeting therapies for inflammatory diseases. The laureate for Sinology is Professor Wang Gengwu for his trailblazing research on the Chinese world order, Chinese overseas, and the Chinese migratory experience. The prize for rule of law is bestowed upon three institutions, Bangladesh Environmental Lawyers Association, the Justicia, the Center for Law, Justice, and Society, and the Legal Agenda for their outstanding endeavors in furthering the law, rule of law and its institutions through education and advocacy. These laureates have made splendid contributions to sustainability, health, culture, and justice, the four fundamental elements of human life and society. They have amplified the spirit of the Tang Dynasty to benefit humankind and made our globe a better place to live in from now to eternity. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chen, for your remarks. Without further ado, let's begin the first prize presentation for today. The Tang Prize in Sustainable Development recognizes those who have made extraordinary contributions to the sustainable development of human societies, especially through groundbreaking innovations in science and technology. Please enjoy a video clip introducing the 2020 Tang Prize Laureate in Sustainable Development. Hello. Is a chimpanzee an animal or a human? For Dr. Jane Goodall, the world's most famous primatologist, the difference is not big. Raised in Bournemouth on the south coast of England, Jane Goodall took a particular interest in nature. She read about Tarzan and Dr. Doolittle in her childhood. Her biggest dream was to work in Africa after growing up. Later, the anthropologist Louis Leakey obtained a grant for her to study chimpanzees. In 1960, she bravely went to Gombe in Tanzania to conduct field work. With her innate sensitivity and spontaneous approach, she was able to observe chimpanzees up close. She found chimpanzees used tools to fish for termites. This debunked the argument that only humans could use tools. This is considered one of the greatest scientific achievements of the 20th century. To win public support, she founded the Jane Goodall Institute. At a conference in 1986, Jane Goodall was shocked by the rapid disappearance of chimpanzees around the world. She decided to devote herself to conservation. She helped establish chimpanzee sanctuaries in several countries in Africa. And around the Gombe Stream National Park, she established Take Care, a community-centered conservation and development program which alleviated poverty in the area while maintaining the local ecological diversity to foster environmental awareness in the next generation. Jane Goodall initiated Roots and Shoots with expectations that the next generation can change the future. This education program now can be found in over 65 countries around the world. Dr. Jane Goodall has had a lot of works published. She has a far-reaching influence in terms of her scientific contributions and spiritual inspiration. As for COVID-19 ravaging the world, she believes that humans brought it upon themselves. When if we get together, and use the amazing intellects that we've been blessed with and care passionately 
about the future of life on Earth and our own children and grandchildren and theirs, we will find a way. We must never give up. I won't. The reason is very simple. Because animals and human beings are both part of nature. Now, it is my honor to invite Dr. Liu Zhao Han, Chair of the Tang Prize Selection Committee for Sustainable Development, to introduce the 2020 Tang Prize Laureate in Sustainable Development and to present the award. Please join me to welcome Dr. Liu. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor and pleasure to present the Sustainable Development Award to Dr. Jane Goodell for her groundbreaking discovery in primatology that redefines human-animal relationship and her lifelong and paralleled dedication to the conservation of Earth's environment. Dr. Goodell is a renowned for her revolutionary study of chimpanzees at the Gambi Stream National Park in Tanzania, which has led to many invaluable insights into our closest relative on Earth. Her pioneering findings that chimpanzees make and use tools critically transformed the way we view ourselves as a species and our relationship with animals. Furthermore, her observations of chimpanzees' social and family interactions have profoundly changed our understanding of human behavior and development. Dr. Godel, who is the UN Messenger of Peace, epitomizes the example of scientists bridging science, policy advocacy, and grassroots environmental practice. Her impacts on our collective aim to achieve sustainable development are global in scale and visceral in depth. Funded in 1977, the Jane Goodell Institute delivers on her mission to protect chimpanzees, conserve nature, and improve people's living conditions. Through her international Roots and Shoots Youth Program, she is dedicated to educating the next generation to become socially and environmentally conscious citizens. A conservationist, humanitarian, and animal welfare advocate, Dr. Godel inspires hope through her action and stories. Despite COVID-19 restrictions, she continues to communicate her message of optimism via virtual presence. At 87, Dr. Godel still relentlessly advocates for people, animals, and the environment. She is an icon of sustainability who has affected real changes in this realm and thus most deserved the prize. Now I'm going to hand both the medal and the diploma over to Dr. Godel. everyone. And needless to say, for me, it's a very great honor to have been chosen 
to receive this prestigious Tang Prize. And I thank everybody on the committee who recommended me. But I want to say that I don't accept this on my own behalf. What I've managed to do in my life through this world is thanks to the efforts and the friendship of so many amazing people along the way. I couldn't have done it on my own. And I especially would like to thank the staff and the volunteers and the boards of the Jane Goodall Institutes around the world, but most especially for the board, the staff and the volunteers of the Jane Goodall Institute Taiwan. My deepest regret is that I can't be with you all today to receive this award in person and to celebrate with the real friends that I've made over the years during my many visits to Taiwan. I also want to thank the Tang Foundation for their incredible generosity in the giving of this prize, because this will enable us to do so much more. This will help the Jane Goodall Institute projects, particularly our project for young people, Roots and Shoots, which is now in 65 countries, but so strong in Taiwan. And it's the hope for the future is the young people. We face many problems today. We face climate change. We face the loss of biodiversity. And of course, we're still struggling to contain this pandemic. All of these things were caused by our disrespect of the environment. And these are the issues which the Jane Goodall Institute around the world is tackling. So this prize bringing with it this generous donation to the Institute is truly going to help us make this a better world for people, for animals and for the environment that we all share. So my deepest gratitude, and I again wish that I could be with you in person so that we could actually raise glasses and drink together and celebrate together. But that time will come and I hope we can get together and do a proper celebration. And once again, thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Liu, for serving as the award presenter. Congratulations to Dr. Jane Goodall. We will now proceed to the second award presentation. The Tang Prize in Biopharmaceutical Science recognizes original biopharmaceutical or biomedical research that has led to significant advances towards preventing, diagnosing, and or treating major human diseases to improve human health. Now, let's enjoy a video clip introducing the 2020 Tang Prize laureates in biopharmaceutical science. The immune system, the guardian of our body, can create various cytokines as an alarm to call on white blood cells to defend against invading bacteria and viruses. However, some people's immune systems will further attack their own healthy cells, causing the so-called autoimmune or autoinflammatory diseases. Rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, and ankylosing spondylitis are such kinds of diseases that can inflict unbearable pain on patients. Then, in the 1990s, Dr. Mark Feldman and his colleague fought against all skepticism and proved that suppressing the cytokine TNF can turn off the alarm and stop the immune system from attacking itself. These patients are now better off. Their life expectancies return to normal. So the impact of our treatment targeted as single molecule has been over the entire disease. Their success ushered in a whole new era of targeted drugs 
called biologics, besides TNF, interleukin-1 and interleukin-6 also proved to be effective targets in many types of inflammatory diseases. Dr. Charles Dinarello, one of the founding fathers of cytokines, discovered interleukin-1-beta. He proved that IL-1 was the long sought after fever inducing molecule and demonstrated the role it plays in inflammation, paving the way for the development of IL-1 targeted therapies. It took six years to isolate this molecule and three years to clone it. It was very challenging. There were a lot of failures, but in the end, I feel I accomplished one thing in my life that's discovered in Toluca-1. Dr. Tadamitsu Kishimoto not only discovered interleukin-6 and its receptor, but also elucidated its signaling pathway and went on to develop the anti-IL-6 antibody that suppresses its effect. I am very glad that our very basic study through almost half century comes into useful to medicine and rescue many patients in the world. Biologics that block cytokines are now answering a different call. That is to treat cytokine storms induced by COVID-19. The possibility that anti-IL-1, IL-6, and TNF biologics can stop COVID-19 from claiming human lives has given the world much to hope for. Their discoveries from decades ago still have new applications and continue to have important impact on human health. Without further ado, please join me to welcome Dr. Zhang Wenchang, Chair of the Tang Prize Selection Committee for Biopharmaceutical Science to introduce the 2020 Tang Prize Laureates in Biopharmaceutical Science and to present the award. It's my great honor to welcome you to this great gathering. <clears throat> the 2020 Tang Prize in Biopharmaceutical Science is awarded to Charles Dinarello, Mark Feldman, and Tatamizu Kishimoto for the development of cytokine targeting biological therapies for the treatment of inflammatory disease. Professor Dina Reno identified and cloned IL-1 beta, establishing IL-1 beta as a potent mediator for inflammation-induced fever, which led to the development of drugs such as Kinaret and Ilaris. Professor Feldman identified TNF-alpha as the key inflammatory cytokine in rheumatoid arthritis and succeeded in blocking TNF-alpha with an antibody for the treatment of this disease, which led to the development of drugs such as Humira and Emperor. Professor Kishimoto identified and clone IL-6 and its receptor, and succeeded in developing the drug Actemra for the treatment of inflammatory disease. The critical breakthroughs that made in their research revolutionized the way we treat inflammatory disease now. I am honored to present to each of them the Tom Price Medal and Diploma.
First and most importantly, I would like to t thank the Tang Foundation for awarding me the prize in biopharmaceuticals for the year 2020. I want to acknowledge my co-recipients, Professors Kishimoto and Feldman, my co-recipients of the Tang Prize. The prize was given to me for our work on interleukin-1. And I'd like to give the audience a background, a little background of the history of interleukin-1. The story begins a long time ago, actually 1966 to be precise. I was a second year medical student at Yale at the time. And I was studying fever. And what I was doing then was injecting rabbits with the supernatants from white blood cells and observing fever. What I observed was so dramatic and, and, and so sudden that upon injecting these supernatants into rabbits, body temperature went up very fast and the ears got very cold as the blood was shunting from the ears to the brain. It was an observation that lasted until today. I've never forgot this response. And this response guided me in the purification of interleukin-1. It also guided me in the attempt and success, I may say, of cloning the first cDNA for IO-1 beta. So this fever response was so important for my career and for the history of IO-1. As I said, this response really never left me and guided me through years of re further research on interleukin-1. I could have easily stopped at that point after cloning IL-1 and injecting rabbits with, with the supernatants. Some 20 years later, when we injected rabbits with human recombinant, recombinant IL-1 beta, the response was identical at the same level, 10 nanograms per kilogram. This was a remarkable discovery that you could have such a potent protein, interleukin-1 beta, that would cause fever at 10 nanograms per kilogram. And we also saw this in humans. What we observed and published in 1977, we observed and published in 1987 with recombinant human IL-1 beta. I could have easily stopped at that point, having solved the problem of the fever molecule that the body made itself to cause fever. But what happened next was truly remarkable. Research exploded on, on, on IL-1 beta. And, and today, we are overwhelmed with the number of publications on interleukin-1 beta for a variety of inflammatory diseases. But starting in the 1990s, it became apparent that blocking IL-1 was really what we had to do. And in the 1990s, we had the first thera therapies of blocking IL-1 in humans with the IL-1 receptor antagonist. And that changed the whole biology of cytokines, that most of them were actually not useful to be used therapeutically, but rather to block them. We, we do this for blocking IL-6, for blocking TNF, and obviously for blocking IL-1. And that's really the nature of cytokine biology. But you know, I'm very fortunate, having witnessed the development of IL-1 and the early therapeutics. I feel very fortunate to be that witness. And I think often of the other scientists who contributed to this area of blocking cytokines in biology. I want to use a, a, an example. Uh, David Volek and Daniela Novik from Israel, they worked on the tumor necrosis factor receptors. And their work on tumor necrosis factor receptors was used, to, was used to develop therapies that are used to treat thousands and thousands of patients um, with, with soluble tumor necrosis factors, uh, receptors. This is sort of an important aspect that other people have contributed 
to cytokine biology in their own way. And I often think of the discoveries that these other scientists have made and how they contributed to this area. What happens also at this point is that other people are realizing that there are other cytokines to block and the area has really ex expanded tremendously where we have other therapies based upon this issue. In accepting the Tang Prize, I have to acknowledge the contributions of so many scientists who path, whose pathways have led to therapeutic innovations. And in accepting the Tang Prize, I really acknowledge their contributions. The honor that the Tang Prize bestows on me also honors my mentors, Phyllis Bodell, Elisha Atkins, and Sheldon Wolf. It also acknowledges and honors our collaborators, our colleagues, our students, and our postdocs. Without their contributions, the IL-1 story would not be complete. I would like to end this acceptance speech with some advice for young researchers. Never think that there are no discoveries left for you to make. I want to repeat that. Never think that there are no discoveries left for you to make. I recall a young doctor from Romania who came to our laboratory to work on interleukin-18 binding protein. He believed that so much had been discovered with the interleukin-1 family that there was nothing left for him to discover. I advise him, don't be so pe pessimistic. Just stay close to the bench. And he did. His name, Mihai Netia, is, is now a Dutch citizen. And he won Holland's most prestigious prize, the Spinoza Prize, for his work on trained immunity, which is also called innate immunity or, or innate memory. I think this is an important issue because it's an example of an area that was unknown at the time. Trained immunity was unknown, how the monocytes, not the T cells, but the monocytes remember previous infections and previous diseases. You know, as long as we have ethical considerations and caution, science has no boundaries, no boundaries at all. And also foundations such as the Tang Foundation help scientists with their support. You know, I want to end this by saying it's a perfect life for young scientists. Thank you very much. It is a great honor to receive the Tang Prize in Biopharmaceutical Sciences for 2020. I want to thank the members and committees of the Tang Foundation for this honor. For me, it's especially pleasing, coming 20 years after my first major prize, the Crawford Prize of the Royal Swedish Academy. It signifies that the discoveries made with my colleagues remain of importance now for a generation. It is a pleasure to share this award with Charles Dinarello and Tadamitsu Kishimoto, long-term friends and competitors. But it is a regret that my important lifelong partner in the anti-TNF adventure, Sir Ravinda Maney, was not included. The tyranny of only three prizes. News of this award came last year during the COVID pandemic, and this was appropriate. Inflammation is what kills patients with severe COVID, and the prize winners have made major contributions in this field. The discoveries made by the three of us are being tested in COVID patients with Dr. Kishimoto's discovery, tocilizumab being ahead and in routine clinical tests, while anti-TNF and anti-interleukin-1 are in clinical trials. That discoveries made for other diseases can help a new disease like COVID testifies to the importance of research. 
an acceptance speech makes you reflect on what helped your success. I've been fortunate over my whole life, my family and education particularly. My parents, Elia, Ellie and Scylla, were very keen on education and ensured that their sons were motivated and supported. Their love and support was much appreciated. They were very proud of my success. My wife, Tanya, has been a wonderful lifelong partner. We married young while I was still a medical student. She encouraged me to follow my dreams and start research and has supported me throughout this long, incredible journey, now 55 years together. My scientific mentors, Sir Gus Nossel and Jacques Miller, at the Walter and Liza Hall Institute in Australia, set me on the right path and taught me key skills, especially asking important questions and persisting till problems were solved. Importantly, the skills I learned enabled me to work together with many talented people to deliver anti-TNF therapy, which from 2012 to 2021 was the world's best-selling medicine. In 2021, it will be surpassed by the COVID vaccine. But delivering anti-TNF therapy could not have been done without important key partners, including Sir Ravinda Maney, Professor Fanula Brennan, Dr. James Woody, and Dr. Michael Shepherd. It is a great pleasure to accept this prize and reflect on my life, blessed by wonderful colleagues and family, and the opportunity to change the world for the better for millions of patients. Thank you. It is indeed my great honor to be awarded this very prestigious the 2020 Tang Prize in the biopharmaceutical science field. I am very pleased to receive this prize with two of my old friends, Dr. Mark Feldman and Dr. Charles Dinarero. I appreciate my life work on interleukin 6 is evaluated and chosen for this highly prestigious award. <clears throat> we discovered interleukin-6 and its receptor system in 1980s and completely elucidated the signaling pathway from membrane to nucleus and the gene expression. Then we noticed that overproduction of IL-6 is responsible for various autoimmune inflammatory disease such as rheumatoid arthritis. Interestingly, not only chronic inflammation, but acute cytokine storm is induced by IL-6 overproduction. In order to treat patients who showed overproduction of IL-6, we prepared anti-IL-6 receptor antibody, now called tocilizumab, for the emission of IL-6 signals. Eventually, this antibody showed a dramatic therapeutic effect on these inflammatory diseases, including, including rheumatoid arthritis. Now, this antibody is used in more than 100 countries and rescued nearly a million of rheumatoid patients. At present, COVID-19 is rapidly spread all over the world, and more than millions of people are infected. Anti-IL-6 receptor antibody, tocilizumab, is shown the possibility to be effective for preventing cytokine storm induced by the infection of SARS-CoV-2 in several clinical trials. I hope that our series of studies on interleukin-6 can rescue millions of patients suffered from rheumatoid arthritis as well as COVID-19 patients. I am very glad that our very basic study through almost half century comes into useful in medicine 
and rescue many patients in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Zhang, for serving as the award presenter. Congratulations to the three 2020 Tang Prize laureates in biopharmaceutical science. Now comes the award presentation for the 2020 Tang Prize in Synology. The Tang Prize in Synology recognizes the study of Synology in its broadest sense, awarding research on China and its related fields, such as Chinese thought, history, philology, linguistics, archaeology, philosophy, religion, traditional canons, literature, and art. Here is a video clip introducing the 2020 Tang Prize Laureate in Sinology. Uh, I, I'm very honored to be one of the awardees of uh, the Tang Prize in Sinology. The 90-year-old professor Wang Gungwu speaks energetically. His thoughts are well organized. He served as president of the University of Hong Kong and was elected academician of Academia Seneca. He is now a university professor at the National University of Singapore. In the fields of Chinese history and Chinese overseas and Southeast Asia, he has achieved irreplaceable academic status. I never set out to be a historian. I, I started being very fond of literature. I wanted to be a writer. But I think I, quite young, I realized that I was not good enough to be a good writer. Then I looked for other things to study. Then I found that um, learning about the past helped me to understand the present. That's how I began. Born in Surabaya, Indonesia, his parents are Chinese intellectuals who hold the motherland at heart. He grew up under the influence of Confucianism and also received a British education. He also studied for a year in Nanjing. Since childhood, he has resided in Malaysia, the UK, Australia, Hong Kong, and Singapore. Diverse cultural and life experiences formed his unique research perspective. Chinese history is traditionally studied by East Asian scholars from within China itself. Western scholars start from the perspective of the West. Wang Gungwu combines the Chinese tradition and perspectives from Southeast Asia to open up a different path. In the early period, he focused on trade in Southeast Asia and also investigated the power structure of Northern China during the Five Dynasties. At that time, he noticed the huge gap between North and South and saw that history was seen mostly from a northerner's viewpoint. A lot of information all came out of northern China. The original Confucian texts, all the famous writers and poets, and uh, even the historians of like Sima Qian. That was the first time I began to at least question whether China was quite as simple as all that. As a pioneer of Chinese overseas studies in Southeast Asia, he thinks that the overseas Chinese should not just be considered in the context of Chinese history. They should be understood based on the circumstances of the migrated locations and their complex and diverse identities. In 2000, when interviewed by reporters in Taiwan, Wang Gungwu talked about the major change that took place in the past century. The Chinese people's attitude shifted from longing to return home to being content with settling down in Southeast Asia. He has never stopped writing since the 1950s. Many of his works have become classics that have inspired scholars across generations. For all these reasons, he was awarded the Tang Prize. And now, I'm very pleased to invite Dr. Huang Jingxing 
Chair of the Tang Prize Selection Committee for Synology to introduce the 2020 Tang Prize Laureates in Synology and to present the award. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Dr. Huang. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great honor and pleasure to introduce to you the 2020 Tang Prize Laureate in Synology, Professor Wang Gengwu. Let me briefly overview his key contribution to the field before presenting him with the award. Professor Wang Gengwu's scholarship is recognized around the world and his works are widely read. His main contributions span the area of Sino-Southeast Asian relations, Chinese world order, and the Chinese migratory experience. Many have come to know him through his groundbreaking research on the Chinese overseas. His profound insights on the history of the Chinese who have traveled and migrated to different parts of the world enrich the explanation of the Chinese people's changing place in the world. As such, he played leading roles in transforming the field of Sinology. His unique approach to understanding China by examining its long and complex relation with its southern neighbors have significantly expanded and augmented the way we study China today. In short, Professor Wang's scholarship and vision transcend time periods, border, and academic disciplines. For this contribution and more, I'm honored to present to Professor Wang Gengwu the 2020 Town Prize in Sinology. honor to be awarded the Tang Prize for Sinology. Let me say how much I admire Dr. Samuel Yin for his wisdom and generosity in establishing the Tang Prizes. The prize in Sinology is particularly insightful. It combines a respect for an ancient field of learning with the recognition that it is still alive and relevant after thousands of years of development. One of the secrets of success of Sinology is its ability to change in response to new knowledge and new methodologies. The way the field has been enriched in the past decades is truly remarkable, and it is a story that is yet to be fully appreciated. I hope that the award of the Tang Prize will draw wider attention to the value of Sinic civilization to the betterment of the human condition. I accept the prize today with humility and a sense of great expectation. Thank you, Dr. Huang, for serving as the award presenter. Congratulations to Dr. Wang. We will now proceed to the presentation of the final award. The Tang Prize in Rule of Law recognizes individuals or institutions who have made significant contributions to the rule of law, reflected not only in the achievement of the candidate in terms of the advancement of legal theory or practice, but also in the realization of the rule of law in contemporary societies through the influences or inspiration of the work of the candidate. The 2020 Tang Prize in Rule of Law is shared by three non-governmental organizations. Please first watch a video of introduction.
With complex historical backgrounds and political and social context, how to advocate for justice is a challenge faced by many countries. Founded in 1992, Bella is an NGO focused on environmental justice in Bangladesh. The founder of Bella initiated litigation in 1994 and won a historical verdict and has thus established the legal basis for public interest litigation. Bella has also improved public awareness of environmental protection and stresses the importance of capacity building for local communities. Bella has filed for more than 250 public interest litigations to date, including for industrial pollution and ship dismantling, and has accomplished substantial results for other environmental issues. In 2017, the Supreme Court of Bangladesh ordered the government to propose a plan of action to protect Dhaka Canal, marking another breakthrough for environmental justice. Founded in 2005, DeJusticia is a Colombian-based NGO that promotes justice and human rights. It adopts the unique amphibious approach, combining both academic research and legal advocacy. On the one hand, DeJusticia focuses on publishing while hosting various seminars to educate the public. On the other hand, it cooperates closely with NGOs around the world. One of DeJusticia's main achievements is the recognition of the collective property of Afro-Colombian communities in the Caribbean region through litigation, which helped more than 300 local families, setting an unprecedented example for the Global South countries. Founded in 2009, the legal agenda advocates for judicial independence in the Arab world and defends the underprivileged groups as an NGO. It assisted the establishment of judge associations and public observatory for the judiciary. Both serve for the purpose of monitoring the judicial organs and in order to achieve the goal of judicial independence. The legal agenda drafted the Judicial Independence Act in 2017, which has been submitted to the Lebanese Parliament for deliberation. It also publishes academic papers and magazines regarding legal issues and works with local human rights groups to fight for labor rights and defends LGBT rights with notable outcomes in Lebanon. The legal agenda also brought cause lawyering to the attention of the public and spreads its influence to other Arab countries. These three legal NGOs work under severe challenges each of them have put their efforts in publications, advocacy, and unique litigation strategies to overcome various difficulties to bring justice and the rule of law to the people and the environment. At this moment, I'm delighted to invite Dr. Ye Junrong, Chair of the Tang Prize Selection Committee for Rule of Law, to introduce the 2020 Tang Prize Laureates in Rule of Law. Please give Dr. Ye a warm welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2020 Tang Prize in Rule of Law is awarded jointly to Bangladesh Environmental Lawyers Association, that is Bella, the Justicia, the Center for Law, Justice, and Society, and the Legal Agenda for their efforts in furthering the rule of law and its institutions through education and advocacy. Utilizing innovative strategic litigation informed by rigorous scholarships, these organizations have shown remarkable resilience in promoting greater individual, social, and environmental justice in places where the foundation of the rule of law are under severe challenge. The three organizations share a common virtue in advancing the rule of law where the necessary institutions have not been firmly established. In this sense, they are truly pioneers. Under challenging circumstances, the recipients bring about social changes by utilizing legal means, in particular strategic dedication, in fighting for the rights and well-being of people in individual cases as well as instigating judicial rulings that forge enduring changes. There's still the realization of individual, social, and environmental justice, 
where it is most needed. It takes thorough research, brilliant legal skill, sharp insights, and tireless effort to achieve this. The impacts of their diligent work have influenced not only their local societies, but also set example for their regions and the wider world. We hope that this well-deserved recognition will encourage many more to follow your footsteps, serving the benefits of generations to come. Congratulations once again. Now, I'm deeply honored to present the 2020 Tang Prize in Rule of Law to Bangladesh Environmental Lawyers Association, Les Bela, the Justicia, the Center for Law, Justice, and Society, and the legal agenda. It is my immense pleasure to receive, on behalf of Bangladesh Environmental Lawyers Association, the Tang Prize for 2020 in the category of Rule of Law. I thank the Tang Foundation for appreciating Bella's work in promoting environmental justice in Bangladesh and for selecting Bella as a winner. In today's world, faced with extreme climatic threats and the pandemic, we are yet to see pragmatic actions to protect the irreplaceable nature against the onslaught of short-term development goals. My country, which is one of the most vulnerable countries due to climate change, is also on a fast track of development, which is often not respectful to nature. Most of the natural resource bases of the country are degrading and disappearing. This has definite consequences for communities solely dependent on natural resources for their survival. Our fight for environmental justice, indeed, is a struggle for sustainable and equitable development, for decent and sustainable living for all, for the present generation as well as for the future generations yet to come. Pursuing environmental justice is not a romantic agenda in any part of the world. It requires the environmental justice advocates to mobilize communities, give voice to the weak, resist faulty and destructive development projects, face the power structure and the vested quarters, create opinion in the society in favor of an alternative development agenda, and use law for that transformation in the development discourse. We, the environmental justice advocates, therefore, are dealing with a very challenging and risky agenda that requires us to be progressive, innovative, brave and alert. When the adversities grow really high, a recognition like the Tang Award really boosts us up. It is so heartening to know that our hard work is being observed by someone in some part of the world. The recognition surely has brought in more responsibility, but at the same time is telling us that we are on the right track. The award given by the Tang Foundation will not only add to our credibility and give us more strength and power, but will also help us attain some degree of sustainability. 
For these, we are truly indebted to the Tang Foundation. With these words, I once again thank the Tang Foundation and hope someday in a pandemic-free world, we get to meet the minds behind the noble agenda of the Foundation. Thank you all. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to our global audience. Almost 40 years ago, our Nobel Prize in Literature, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, mentioned in his lecture of acceptance that he dared to think that the prize was given to him due to the reality of the society that surrounded him and that inspired his 100 years of solitude. I tend to think that this time, the grand jury in the Tang Prize in Rule of Law has had a, a similar thought in law rating the reality of the society that we're surviving in and that we are trying to transform. This reality is defined by poverty, inequality, injustice, violence, corruption, lack of opportunities that cause fragmented families and fragmented lives. But it is also defined by our firm belief that the rule of law is part of the solution. These fragmented families and lives deserve a better distribution of basic goods and the rule of law is part of the tool to do this. There are hundreds and even thousands of social and environmental leaders that work with their lives in danger that follow this cause. There, this is also the cause of legal agenda and the cause of Bella. This is also the cause of the Justicia, of course, and the cause, I believe, of the Tang Prize. May I thank the Tang Prize Committee for distinguishing the Justicia with this award, but also for allowing us to share the honor of being next to Louis Arbor, to Albie Sachs, and to Joseph Rast, who have set a light and a direction for all those lawyers and scholars and jurists that want to transform the reality by litigating, doing some advocacy, and also legal, conducting legal research. This is an invitation, but this is also an opportunity to continue with our collective work for a better world. Thank you. We at Legal Agenda are honored to receive the Tang Prize for the Rule of Law, and we are honored to follow several previous prestigious former laureates who had significant contributions to both the theory and practice of the rule of law in the world. This prize is very important to us for several reasons. First, it comes as an international recognition of our efforts exactly 10 years after the legal agenda was founded. One of our most important initial goals was precisely to promote the rule of law in public debates and institutions in Arabic-speaking countries. And this is particularly illustrated by our substantial contributions for the independence of the judiciary in these countries. Second, the prize comes at a very critical moment in our history. It is a critical time for most Arabic-speaking countries where principles of the rule of law are breached every day and face incredible challenges. But it's also a very critical time for Lebanon and Tunisia, where our headquarters are based. Both countries are facing unprecedented and severe political and socio-economic crisis after our authorities failed to serve our societies and our people who are now struggling to survive on a daily basis and to access basic necessities and resources. We are concerned that the existing foundations of the rule of law will be one of the first victims of this crisis, which would make our work even more necessary in the coming years. In addition, the current global COVID-19 crisis is having devastating effects in our societies. It is exacerbating inequalities. It is threatening the existence and implementation of socioeconomic rights as well as political rights. The pandemic is often used as a pretext to weaken the foundations of the rule of law, especially in fragile democratic environments such as the Arab ones. It is for these reasons 
that the tank prize gives us a renewed strength to continue and develop our fight for social justice in this challenging context. The prize will provide much needed recognition and resources to defend the principles of the rule of law in the near future. We are also happy that our co-laureates this year, the Justicia from Colombia and Bella from Bangladesh, also come from what is commonly called the Global South. This highlights the importance and necessity to build new coalitions across the Global South in order to exchange experiences and strengthen cooperation around a mutual understanding of the concept of the rule of law, an understanding that would be emancipated from the direct influences of industrialized and former colonial powers. Finally, winning the prestigious Tank Prize for the Rule of Law confirms our belief in our mission at the legal agenda and strengthens our will in our multiple fights for the rule of law, democracy, and social justice in Arabic-speaking countries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ye, for serving as the award presenter. Congratulations again to the three Tang Prize laureates in rule of law. Ladies and gentlemen, as we bring this ceremony to a close, we would like to invite you to join us for a toast to celebrate the success and the remarkable efforts of the Tang Prize laureates to create a better world. Cheers to the 2020 Tang Prize laureates. Congratulations. In light of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Tang Prize award ceremony for 2020 has moved online for the very first time in history. Despite the opportunities that have opened up to the Tang Prize through the virtual world, we hope the world will return to normal next year and the award ceremony will take place in Taipei, a tradition of the Tang Prize since 2014. Again, we're honored and delighted to have you join us to share the joy in honoring laureates' contributions and to continue the spirit, value, and vision of impacting mankind for good. Ladies and gentlemen, I hereby announce that the 2020 Tang Prize Award Ceremony has come to a successful close. We look forward to seeing you in person in the 2022 Tang Prize Award Ceremony. <laughs>